friends let me take you to this module on colonoscopic hardware we need to appreciate the intricate design of a colonoscopy here as you can see here the colonoscopy like an endoscopy has basically three parts the control head the insertion section which goes to the patient and also the umbilical cord as you normally see in every scope very important thing for all of us whether it is an endoscopy or a colonoscopy is how you are going to hold the control head with your non dominant hand you watch the picture very carefully you just gently hold this 1 or 1.5 kg weight control head it is a very light weight so you can hold it in the first web space embrace it with your three fingers and engage these two fingers for the superior and inferior button the index for the superior and the middle finger for the inferior button like that you just control that is the way to hold the control head and the control head soon you will find out it has two wheels and two buttons the wheels are mainly to steer it is like a steering wheel in your car isn't it that also you already know if you are a seasoned endoscopist i am sure these are all going to be very basic for you but still to have a comprehensive understanding i need to tell you the big wheel is meant for the up and down movement like for example if you bring the big wheel towards you the tip of the scope looks up looks if you see the monitor like a clock it looks at 12 o'clock position the big wheel away from you it start going towards the 6 o'clock position so you go by the clock the next important thing is of course the right and left and a small wheel does that okay the small wheel away from you takes it to the right towards you take it to the left but small wheel is seldom used both in the upper and lower ga endoscopy because we use the torquing clockwise and anti clockwise in order to do if you do a clockwise like 9 10 11 like that clockwise torque this you turn to the right anti clockwise turn to the left so these are all the things helps by this and how it is possible that is because of this what we call this chain and sprout mechanism wherein by this strong mechanism of pins and is able to do the whole thing so the whole assembly is very fascinating it is all decades of hard work by the scientists they have done this marvelous design in a compact pack for you coming to the important thing before we do is unlock the lock that is a very important thing because you see where i am just showing the both the upper and the smaller wheel that is a big wheel and a small wheel they have the locks you need to put it forward to move forward don't keep it in a locked mode that is another important thing you need to understand and you all know the function of the buttons the superior button is for suction as you can see in this picture nicely demonstrated whenever you initiate the superior button the fluid is sucked not only from the lumen but also you need to realize for the suction to be effective the access channel cap as you can see should be closed that is a common fundamental mistake you should not do like here this cap has to be closed nicely otherwise air can leak the suction may not be successful that is a very important thing i wanted to tell you and also the inferior button the inferior button has a dual function yes that is superior button is for suction i inferior button is for dual function so what are the dual functions it encephalates so that the colon distance you are able to go forward and also instill water whenever the lens is little muggy so these are all the important things let us understand how all this possible by this inferior button for example here normally what happens is from the air pump the air is constantly coming but it is let out through a small hole in the inferior button like this but when you place your hand just your finger middle finger there and close that hole the air no longer able to come out so it continues its travel and while it does that it is just pushing the valve and goes and go to the end of the colonoscopy and encephalates so this is the thing in other words normally air continuously flowing but it, the flow is directed towards the end of the colonoscopy thanks to this simple mechanism the same way the same inferior button when it is in a normal side it is not allowing the water to go but when you press it hard like this and it lets the water trickle down and then like infant passing urine and cleanse the lens so these are the simple mechanisms as i said they look seemingly simple but each valve is very expensive because they are very delicate equipments for that matter 
and this is what we call the external anatomy you have seen and this is the internal anatomy of the colonoscopy. So many tiny tubes all in this 10.2 millimeter scope very very marvelous engineering marvel I would say and each scope whether it is a Olympus, Pendex, Fujinon whenever a manufacturer gives a scope better you see how it is getting attached. Here for example, a processor is there Olympus 170 where you are able to plug in and where the processor and where you attach the suction and where the bottle is coming everything you should know and then only you need to see very important thing is of course the last 20 centimeter or so of your colonoscopy what we call the bending section and also if it is possible switch off the light and with a magnifying glass try to see the end because this is what we call a, it is a type of the end viewing scope like a side viewing duodenoscope here is the end viewing you can see the lens and the two things very nicely it is demonstrated in this picture as you can see this is the opticals and you can see the two lights here usually either halogen xenon sometimes you can have also led like here and also the working diameter usually working diameter is quite big in colonoscopy sometimes 3.2 is a normally we recommend and air feeding channel and additionally sometimes you have what we call irrigation channel also extra irrigation if you want to just irrigate because water colonoscopy water immersion colonoscopy is a in thing nowadays. I, I told every time you need to see the monitor whatever you see is like a clock. So, you try to bring any lesion before you do biopsy or a procedure to the bottom half because you soon realize whenever you pass any biopsy force of snare or anything through the access channel it usually comes around as you can see here at 5 o'clock position in the bottom half. So, if the lesion is here it is easy to plug if the lesion is there it is very very difficult to tackle. So, you need to be very careful where to bring the lesion and what happens how you are able to see a nice beautiful picture of colonoscopy views very simple as you can see here in the picture when you put the thing on what happens the light from the light source if it is imagine there is a yellow color it is showing the light it goes and throws a xenon light or a halogen light or LED light thrown into the darkness of the bubble and the reflected image is going into the objective lens to the charged coupled device where the photons optical image is converted into electrons the electrical impulse is going through the cables the blue follow the blue it goes all the way to the processor and processed done or the processed thing you see in the high definition monitor very simple but very effective thing it is not a one day job as I said nowadays we have the high definition colonoscopy Olympus various makes Pendex there are different numbers are available 5000, 7000 and also Fujinon EPX. So, you need to see because high definition magnification colonoscopy with the image enhancement technology is a future do not think it is for the future actually it is a present status that is bare requirements because colonoscopy unlike a endoscopy we need to find the lesion early and we need to do or make a tissue diagnosis even without a biopsy what we call a in vivo tissue diagnosis for this optical diagnosis these are all essential things you know that and I told you already the basic how the uh, video colonoscopy functions that is what I just mentioned but what is more interesting is this narrow band imaging especially in Olympus if you buy they have additional filter what we call optical blue and green filter what they do because 415 and 540 millimeter or nanometer that there the lights like the blue light and green lights are only let through. So, because of that you are able to get a nice contrasting image. So, that you are able to detect early lesions and you are maybe able to make a more accurate diagnosis and if there are some wide lesion you do not know which is the more dysplastic which is a normal one. So, you are able to target the biopsy site also. So, there are various definite advantages of having an image enhancement endoscopy. So, colonoscopy if you are going to buy tomorrow go for a one which has the provision of image enhancement. As I said narrow band imaging is only one of the three modalities if you are going to buy appendix for example as you can see here and eye scan and it comes with the three different enhancement surface, tone and contrast enhancement depending upon that if you see a lesion the lesion is very easily detected by eye scan 1, characterized by eye scan 2 
on the demarcated which is a lesion the periphery of the lesion by I scan 3. Same way instead of xenon light if you are going to use for example, a blue laser light fujinon also helps you with a brighter and a clearer images and these are all few images we could get a beautiful images. So, you can make a diagnosis very accurately and the patient by the time they come out of the colonoscopy room they know what they are uh, having. So, ladies and gentlemen I would say the image enhancement technology is very very important in addition the magnification colonoscopy. When I say magnification normally when we have a conventional standard colonoscopy it gives you around 30 to 35 times the magnification. But if you have this magnification colonoscopy I am showing here which is having a zoom lens you can have up to 150 times what do you mean by 150 times imagine you have about 2 millimeter lesions here and if you put the lens on zoom it will become immediately zoomed into so big with the surface characteristics then you can immediately tell oh this looks like a metaplastic polyp what we call a q dose classification all this we are able to do thanks to this magnification. But we are actually one step further than the magnification colonoscopy in the advances of colonoscope you will see in our other chapter that we have up to 500 times magnification what we call the endocytoscopy. So, all these things are possible and they are all nicely packed like in this wrapping like a polymer cover as you can see so many things I would probably allow you to go back and read in the book and just stare at this picture for at least for a few minutes to see what are the things inside see how the biopsy forceps the light cable bundles air channels they all how nicely they are compact because when you have a small mistake the person has to unravel do all the procedure whatever defect he has to correct it then only he has to put the whole thing together. So, it is a very very expensive anything you are going to do in colonoscopy or endoscopy is going to be expensive because of this a lot of manual labor it includes. So, the main thing is prevention rather than so you need to do religiously cleaning disinfection leak test those are the things we are going to tell and also there are additional things are available also if there are I mean if your money if you are you having a like a big packet I would say you go even for this what we call a variable stiffness colonoscopy wherein if you see just below the control head there is a little round knob by clockwise twisting you can make the scope tip little stiffer. So, that the sigmoid colon loop formation is minimized. So, when you go beyond the sigmoid when you turn this knob and because of the stiffness it will not allow further loop formation. So, this is very very important quality I would say. Then next important thing is the colonoscopy unlike the endoscopy is much more softer and high it is still it is strong how it is possible because of us all this multi layers you can see the rings of metal and all this chambers polymer everything coating together gives you the right mix. So, that you have the flexibility at the same time not compromising on the strength that is the beauty, but still as I said how you are going to hold because endoscopy normally is shorter than you because it is only 110 centimeter whereas colonoscopy is taller than you like this. So, whenever you are going to hold colonoscopy you need to hold above your head and also whenever you are hanging in a storage cabinet like that you have to hang them vertically then only the water can I mean will not stagnate and there would not be any problem of moisture inside because infection is a problem. So, very ventilated cupboard like what we normally do in our hospital this is the way to store not in the suitcase where you buy it from. So, as a nutshell I would say these are all the things you need to learn before you start taking the colonoscopy thinking of doing it in the next patient. So, we will go to the steps of colonoscopy in the next module thank you until then bye bye.